So guys, this is supposed to be a uh, iron metabolism, or I'm going to repeat just a few things about the iron metabolism. So uh, this is duodenum, and this is a proximal part of, of yeunum. This is liver, and over here you got, uh, this is a bone, and this is a spleen. And over here we got uh, um, enterocyte. And the point uh, where where the where the iron is reserved is enterocyte is the is the duodenum and the proximal part of of yeunum. And let's say the average or the maximum um, rate at which the the iron is a, or the, the 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 duodenum is able to resorb is is like three to four milligrams per day per day. And the point is that normally, or I mean, on average, a male needs like one milligram per day, and female needs they need like two milligrams per day. The exception is a pregnant female. What else? Uh, they need like five milligrams per day. So over here, you can see that every pregnant woman is actually a bit deficient because the the the, the GIT tract is not able to fulfill the needs. Okay, so anyway, so so how is it with uh, with with, with uh, iron resorption? So all the enterocytes they have this special transporter over here, which is called ferroportin. Ferroportin, okay, and the, the ferroportin is uh, regulated if it's open or not, or it's closed by a special molecule which you all know, and that is hepcidin. Hepcidin is a also acute phase reaction. Hepcidin is produced by liver and very, uh, very strongly controls iron uh, resorption, or in other words, release of iron from, from certain cells. And those certain cells are mainly enterocytes, also hepatocytes, and also the macrophages, or in other words, the cells of the reticuloendothelial system. Okay, so so it's over here, ferroportin, and it's over here as well. Okay, and over here we're going to have a macrophage as well, in spleen, and it has an, of course, a ferroportin as well. And this epsidin is able to block it. So basically, if we're having high levels of epsidin the iron won't be resorbed or released from these cells, okay? And there is a special mutation or genetic disease, uh, disorder we can have. It's called primary hemochromatosis. And um, there's a problem, there are many types, and mainly the, the, there's a genetic problem in releasing of this, uh, this, uh, this molecule. And this molecule is low in the blood, and that's why uh, the person increasingly resorbs uh, iron which is deadly in at the end especially for liver and also heart okay okay but let's let's go back so if everything works epsidin very tightly controls the resorption and if we have lots of uh, iron in our body epsidin will block the resorption and the iron will stay in the enterocytes actually in the enterocytes iron i mean it gets resorbed and is fixed over here or stored with ferritin and and why? Well, because ferritin, like, uh, like, like, bind iron would be toxic for the cell, so uh, it's bound uh, with the ferritin, and fer ferritin protects the toxicity of the protects the cell against the toxicity of the the iron. And okay, so, so, uh, but if we don't have enough of iron, hepcidin is low, and that's why ferritin will be open. This opens. And then uh, uh, iron gets released from ferritin. Actually, it's bound in the Fe3 um, form, and then it gets and is transported in the blood with transferrin, also with Fe3 in, in this state. And transferrin then brings 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 the iron in all around the body, but especially to hepatocytes and also to bone and um, again in hepatos hepatocytes the, the 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 iron is bound with ferritin again and it is there stored for other time okay so so we have a big storage of iron in in this in the liver 
uh, and when we need it again it can be released with the through the ferroportin to, to the bloodstream not not only ferritin also there are small amounts of hemorrhoidin so so in, but but majorly it's ferritin okay which 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 binds the iron okay and then uh, iron in the in the bone or bone marrow over here uh, first of all it can be directly transported to the erythroblasts which are developing um, erythrocytes but and also to macrophages which are um, these are called central macrophages or like uh, these macrophages are very important because the erythrocytes are developing and maturing on, on, bound to these uh, macrophages. So the iron again can be here as a ferritin, but also and majorly as hem hemosiderin. So basically, the central macrophages, and we call this a er erythroid. niche this is where they're where the erythrocytes are de developed so so basically iron gets directly to the er erythroblast and also if erythroblast needs more the the iron is given by the macrophages to the uh, to the erythroblast and not only these when when the erythroblast mature at the end they will lose the the nucleus and the nucleus is actually sucked by or or moved it's called enucleation and it's moved into the into the macrophage and then it is released as a reticle site as a reticle site and don't forget the reticle site they have no nuclei they have only like pieces of what of RNA over here and uh, typically in normal blood peripheral blood you have like two percent of reticle sites and they will mature in the blood like in one or two days uh, watch out if there is for example hemolysis whatever then you're going to have because the the, the the bone marrow is going to now produce more and more it's like like a really that starts to produce lots of lots of reticle sites so the the percentage will be higher and also because it releases less major reticle sites they are able to stay there longer three four days okay but this is a normal like when there is no hemolysis so norm, normal normally fully uh, the, the, it takes two two days to for the reticle sites to become a normal regular erythrocyte and when it is a normal regular erythrocyte okay then uh, the erythrocytes does 120 days in the bloodstream and then it is destroyed and exactly by the macrophages which are in the spleen and again the iron is kept over here in these macrophages in the spleen okay and again it's controlled by the hepcidin because they have the ferroportin one one more cell uh, uh, has also um, uh, ferroportin and that is adipocyte but in, in the, over here majorly we talk about enterocytes hepatocytes and the the cells of the reticle endothel endothelial system which are macrophages okay so so uh, th this is what the this is the over here you should get the idea of the like central role of epsilon and, and not only this also uh, if we check the levels of let's say ferritin and transferrin they tell us very interesting stuff so for example uh, if the if basically if we have lots of lots of iron in our body we have high uh, ferritin stores and um, although ferritin is mainly in the cells it's been released into the bloodstream so in case we have increased levels of ferritin you should understand this as we have lots of iron in our body in contrast to this if we have increased levels of transferrin this is the transfer transfer molecule and typically it has two seats for the for, for, for the iron so if there is high transferrin it means the the body is hungry for, for iron it wants iron and even better is we call it a total iron binding capacity that means if, if it is increased that means there are many empty seats for iron and that the body wants iron also you can for example do a bone marrow puncture and and or suction and check for hemosiderin 
and and if this is decreased it that means there are no storages of iron in the bone marrow okay so um i guess out of this i i think this is enough and let's 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 go farther so thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe and as always check the description below for supplementary questions and other stuff. <laughs>